you ready? Sorry, sorry for the wait, Zan. Let's do it. Let's do this. Just come on into stream call. Or actually, here we can we can call directly. All right, let's do this. Wait, uh, I gotta get you up on camera, right? Hold on, let's see. Yeah, here. Wait. Oh no, I didn't. Shit. Okay. I'm not gonna be on video, but you're gonna be on video. Hold on. There, I'm calling uh, you. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Uh, you uh, I, I don't no? want to be on camera. Oh, right, I just no, no, woke camera. up and I don't even have a shirt on. <laughs> no yeah. worries, no worries. Then here, all right. Let's yeah. let's get you let's get you up on the on the list so people can see. Ye, yeah. thank you. Yeah, no problem. Here we go. The guest, uh, the little guest art that I uh, that I have temporarily thrown up, which I, until I get my real uh, overlay, which is gonna be cool as fuck. But that's not nice. No, that's later. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you enjoy the the grand tale of of Boogie Two Ninety Eight? I didn't do the whole thing because that would take literal hours. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I think I think you did a good job. There was just Thank like um, one thing I wanted to go over, just yeah, because I feel do. like it is somewhat important context that it adds to your overall uh, point that you're making. But I, I do think that it's worth uh, informing everybody about. And I'm going to try to keep it spoiler free because I know a lot of people haven't seen it and my girlfriend and I are like two thirds of the way through it. But um, uh, how many, are you aware of, uh, I think it's called an ARG. Mm -hmm. I am very yeah. aware of ARGs, yep. So there was one that was done know, for, um, for Lost oh, yeah. and there was one that was done for Bioshock 2, believe it or not. Oh wait, am I mixing up uh, words? No, not ARG. Um... Alternate reality game? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. in the sense that it's like a, a series that's done rather than so much of a, uh, a real life thing, right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think there's a, a uh, there's a couple of ways that they're structured, but yeah, yeah, like Slenderman, think... yeah, like Slender. Well, Slenderman was more than that though, but yeah, yeah, it's an ARG, yeah. Th yeah. So I'll, I'll I'll explain like the the backstory to it. So there is a YouTuber that goes by the name of McJuggernuggets. His real name is Jesse. Uh, you'll have heard him mentioned a few times in the Boogie video that you showed on on the uh, stream. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesse was the creator of probably the largest scripted series ever done on YouTube um, that was like meant to appear real. Back when the series happened, these videos got fucking huge. They went viral, tens of millions of views on many of them. And they managed to keep the fact that it was all scripted and not real under wraps basically the entire time. There were obviously holes that were poked into it, but right. for the most part, the vast majority of people who saw it <clears throat> were not aware that it was fake. No videos were uploaded out of character through the entirety of the multiple years this series took place, and they were uploaded daily. And this series was called broadly the Psycho series. You've probably um, seen videos of like, uh, psycho dad mows over video games and basically jesse played this um just out of college sort of neck beardy t like gamer boy who was living with his parents and his dad really and he loved video games and he wanted to be a youtuber and his dad wasn't cool with it and they would constantly get into these conflicts and over the course of years the story evolved until it hit a breaking point and mm -hmm. i'm not going to spoil too much but one of those breaking points was jesse being stuck in this room in the basement and in this room he would he was restricted to only being allowed to film in this room and he wanted to upload videos still so he would just rant into the camera and he ended up building this effigy out of styrofoam and one of the uh, the, the main part of the effigy was a styrofoam head which you'll notice was in the effigy that boogie was being the shit out of right mm -hmm. and it sort of formed like a cross and then he like had like a little bit of um drywall from a different story sort of type taped to it and um, he basically went crazy in this room, right? That was like the the character going through a ton of shit. Right. And then a couple episodes later, the series ends up ending, right? Mm -hmm. um, however, many of you will also know that Boogie did a similar thing, though not as dedicated as what Jesse did. He did the Francis character. And um, uh, Boogie's real life wife played the character's sister. Yes. Now, <clears throat> in real life, uh, something happened. I agree that something probably that was Boogie's fault uh, caused the divorce to happen. I can't know for sure, but... It's so hard to find actually anything verified. Yeah, it's so difficult. Yeah. yeah. It's just the, the feeling that I get, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, of course. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that, like, would point towards that. Like, again, and if you go through and read the mega threads, they have... Those mega threads have a lot of plausible evidence that would say that, yeah, Boogie was probably being a giant piece of shit. Um, but again, most of it's conjecture because nothing can be confirmed. 
Yeah, it's mostly just like what you interpret the evidence to lead you to believing. Um, <clears throat> I, I side more on the end of like, yeah, but just knowing like the drama and the, the history that Boogie has, he probably did some pretty yikesy shit that resulted in the divorce happening. Um, oh yeah, I thought the Psycho series was real at the time, by the way. Um, but after this, the, the events that happened when Boogie and his wife got divorced also coincided with the end of the Psycho series and the beginning of a new series. And this new series was all about the idea that when you've played a character for so much time in your day, for so many years, your real personality and that character start to become indistinguishable, or you don't know which is the real you at that point. And that was the point of Jesse's series. I think it was called like The Demon Inside, something like that. Um, or the devil inside, something like that. And it was it was a good series, not as good as the Psycho series. Psycho series will always be classic. But um and it, it focused on Jesse struggling with who the real him was. And like you talked about this with wrestlers, right? Like yeah, where yeah. who's the real me, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So eventually, um, he ends up coming across Boogie because Boogie and Jesse in real life are friends, so why not bring uh Boogie into the into the series? So Boogie's presence in the series, he's supposed to be Boogie, not Francis. But as it turns out, Francis has the same issue as Jesse is going through, where he's having a hard time parsing out the character and the real him. And in this series, he plays a very <clears throat> interesting character when he's in Francis mode. So normally, he's very nice, he's warm and inviting, and he invites them over, and they hang out, and they play some video games, they have food. Um, but the but Boogie or, or Francis is still in there and is just ready to pop out any second, right? And so Francis will pop out, do some terrible shit, and then um, Francis or, or Boogie will come back and kind of gaslight them into sticking around and, and stuff like that. And there's a point in the series where Boogie would do things like he's also like a deranged sex pervert in in this series as well, who locks one of Jesse's friends in the attic in the and, series, uh, quote unquote, yeah. Well, it, that was definitely scripted. Um, yeah, and, and, yeah, but then there was the whole thing that happened on H3H3 with the, 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 the sex worker story. But anyway, let's go. Go on, go on, yes. Well, the, I, I think the sex, wasn't the sex worker story, like, consensual? Well, that's the thing, because there was, there was multiple sex workers, and if I recall correctly, one of them um, said that he was, like, he kept pushing boundaries, and so that she refused to go work with him again, because he kept pushing boundaries and was really uncomfortable to be around, and there was multiple sex workers who kept feeling uh, pressured into longer-term uh, commitments with uh, him. Yeah, it was yeah, very weird. Was again, one of those situations where... <laughs> It's hard to verify the veracity of anything because it's impossible to tell what's character, what's fiction, what's played up, and what's not. But allegations have been made, so. Yeah, I would recommend listening to the side of the. I think Caratus just uh, Carrot Otis just mm -hmm. posted a, a link to the story by of the sex workers, like the videos they made. So yeah. I would recommend checking those out for anyone in chat who's curious about that. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it is confirmed that like the. Uh, the boogie in this case it's francis locking jesse's friend in the attic in the video was completely scripted like they do like a little segment where jesse is playing the game and then um the friend who they'd already built up like some animosity between boogie and this like i think his name was isaac or no no no, his name was um i can't remember the name of the, he was the cameraman uh -huh. um in this series right um <clears throat> Uh, Boogie or, or Francis ends up locking the cameraman in the attic, tricking him into going up there and keeping him up there. And, and then uh, Boogie goes down to uh, Jesse and is like, oh, no, I, he's fine. I, he just he needed to leave. You know, he needed to go do something and and is basically trying to he wants to fuck Jesse. At least that's the impression that I get mm -hmm. and uh, wanted to get the cam cameraman who he didn't like out of the way. And so the series becomes, at this point, in part, Jesse trying to find out the real him, as well as Boogie, or Francis acting as kind of an antagonist that Jesse is also trying to help get back to, like, his real self. And so that part that we watched in the, um, in the basement, in that room, uh, there's still the writing on the wall from the Psycho series originally, is when they locked uh, Boogie in the basement 
and we're like, all right, you need to chill the fuck out. You need to calm down and get back to your real self. You need to switch characters again. And and this basically the way this happened would be by snapping. And eventually Jesse teaches um, Boogie this method. You just like, when you really want to change characters, like change back to your real self, you would snap. It's like very silly series, yeah, yeah. but like the premise behind it is somewhat grounded in reality. Um, that they play it up quite a bit. But that particular video is a skit, though I do think you have a point with pointing out that like the effigy is meant to, is obviously supposed to be the character's sister, who is also his wife. So there's probably some, you know, art imitates life, right? Some of those things that he said are probably real feelings. Well, I that mean, he had. some of them were, were absolutely true, at least based on if you're coordinating it to his other things that he talked about on streams that weren't a part of the series. Like when yeah. he, when that thing went up, some of the things he talked about, like, uh, I mean, he talks about like, oh, you feel more superior to me because you took care of me. You like you saved me when I was going to die. Those are things he's talked about, like candidly in the past on before mm -hmm. any of this series existed. So, again, it's like it's one of those things where it's like, is this like a part of the story or is this just literally him acting out things? I mean, because, again, like I said, he talked about a lot of these things with his wife, the effigy being based on his wife being on the character of his wife, but then he's talking about things that he said happened in real life at much earlier points before this uh, this series had ever even been conceived, which is why it gets so con con so strange. Yeah, that's definitely part of it, and you're completely right. Um, a big part of the series is that it's a play off of reality in the sense that, like, they aren't canonically in the series playing characters they're playing themselves who is struggling with the fictional characters that they played mm -hmm. so the idea behind it i suppose would be the would be like in that breakdown scene that we saw in the video in the video that you showed mm -hmm. the idea is that this is um not just francis being mad about his sister leaving him because that's the lore explanation after the divorce happened yeah but also a bit of of boogie uh in real life drawing from his actual real life uh uh anger into his character that he's playing in the series which is also supposed to be him mm -hmm. right um so it, it's kind of like a loop now it's like ultra meta it's four four wall fourth wall breaks it, it's right? ultra meta but there's also really weird inconsistencies because again like this entire time while all of this is happening you know he's telling he's vlogging to his fans um on youtube and telling them oh yeah it was like a it's like a friendly breakup and like we're still on good terms and then on twitch he's like uncomfortably trying to call his ex-wife while live on stream like again it's just it's impossible to figure out what's actually going on and it all seems like at the end of the day like what is is this just like a, a plausible deniability so he can say oh yeah it's all just characters don't look any deeper you know yeah i think so there's a few things that um that i want to say one is have you ever like watched one of boogie's streams live oh yeah 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 Yeah, boogie is very different when he's live on twitch than he is on videos yep. that is without a doubt true he mm -hmm. definitely plays um i wouldn't say a character but more so a a online persona that's a bit more reasonable and uh well adjusted than his real self um, but every YouTuber kind of does that to an extent, right? Like, generally, whenever I go live, I, I'm pretty open with, like, what's going on in my life. I mean, <laughs> I talked about, uh, I, I kept it a secret for a while, but, like, for the mo majority of the time I've been doing politics, I was stuck living with my parents, mm -hmm. who were, like, pretty abusive and all that, right? Yeah. Um, but, um, like, I think a lot of what happens just from watching Bookie's streams is that he feeds off of the energy that his audience gives him hardcore like if his audience is like 100%. shitting on him for a thing or encouraging him to do a thing yeah he'll do whatever he thinks will please the audience he's a big time people pleaser yeah and um i feel like this leads to him acting in ways that are probably not things that he actually wants to do is it an excuse for his behavior no but it is a reason that's worth considering mm. as to why he behaves the way he does absolutely um and i think that has a lot to do with it and of course there's also the idea that like it's possible that him and his ex-wife are on good terms, and it's also possible that he, both of them harbor some level of animosity towards each other. Mm -hmm. You don't go through a divorce and end a multi-year relationship, a marriage, mm -hmm. without there being some level of animosity, but oh, that doesn't also mean yeah. you can be on speaking terms or on some non-angry, non-hateful terms, right? So it's it's really hard to, like, deep look into someone's life. When it comes to the... um 
to his political change i i agree with you that like you got to be careful when it comes to this i don't mm -hmm. think he's like grifting or anything like that like i don't really get that impression i'm pretty good at sussing that out yeah. um but i i think what's happening is that um boogie realizes that he can never do he can never be a people pleaser to the people on the alt right these types of people see boogie as like i guess a low cow right they'll they'll yeah. always be there to like shit on him no matter what he does simply because of his appearance his past and just because they think it's fun right mm -hmm. while he's noticed the left shits on him for being like a a spineless fence sitter who won't really um hardcore con you know have any he doesn't have any hardcore convictions and so he realizes that he can never really please the right. The right's always going to bully him online. Mm -hmm. But if he actually sticks to his principles and stops being like a, a fence sitter, maybe he can get the left off of his back when it comes to like attacking and bullying him. Yeah. And even if it is a bit disingenuous, I still think it's a positive outcome as long as it's genuine. Yeah. I mean, there are, I, I just, I urge people to take a basically utmost uh, skepticism and, and because again, like having a, having like political fallout is not exactly a new thing that Boogie does. Like, I mean, again, he chose to weigh in pretty heavily into, um, into Gamergate. And I happen mm -hmm. to know personally, although this of course can never be verified because, um, because, it's lost to the history of the internet, but I know personally he was posting on 4chan um, like, and was talking about that even on other platforms that he was posting on 4chan as himself uh, during the like height as the, this was getting whipped up into the, what we now know as Gamergate. So like, mm -hmm. he's not quite as distanced as, as he likes to pretend. And like, I don't know, again, like it's not that there's anything that it's really going to like, I don't think that people are going to like jump on board and super welcome him in or whatever, but I figured that it would be fun since he's making these huge comments on the back of the game of, uh, of the GameStop stock situation, um, that it would be good to let people know that like, you know, this is person with a long, long history of the internet and like multiple drama cycles that have done a lot of damage, uh, whether intentional or not. To people on the internet i mean his boosting of of gamergate was not good like it really wasn't oh, no, absolutely. yeah and um yeah and then also like again like the way that he's interacted with his audience at times is just straight up reprehensible like because there mm -hmm. is there is no doubt that like whether it's fi whether it was fictional or not he did use his mental health as a way to manipulate his audience if there were people who were criticizing him he would just you know especially on live streams he would just be like well i guess i'll just kill myself later and it's just like dude that is so unhealthy that is so fucked up so yeah, I don't yeah. know. I just I just urge people to take great caution with this individual. Not that I don't think that he might not be like a creative person or like had a hard hard past. I think it's probably true. I just uh I just worry about um, you know, this person who's sort of like serially flipped back and forth when it's convenient. Um, I don't know. I don't know that there's going to be I don't know if we're going to get a satisfying, uh, you know, leftward awakening on this uh because he's gone really far right in the past and and said I'm off the fence on this, you know what I mean? In the past, he's done that a million times. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think um it is hard to like gauge what will happen in the future. Of course. I'm yeah. I'm someone who sees if someone is genuinely moving to the left, that's always a win. It doesn't matter who they are. I, I typically see that as a win. Yeah. Um, just in regards to like, as a consequentialist, it's good to bring people over to the left. The problem is like, how genuine is it? I, I think it it's probably fairly genuine. Um, like it seems like Boogie's actual political opinions, at least on social issues, are probably more on the progressive side. A lot of people that were progressive did take part in Gamergate on the really bad shit, thinking that oh, yeah, no, I'm I'm left leaning. It's just these crazy SJWs. They aren't really left. -leaning. They're the they're the um, regressive left. I like mean, the kind of shit I don't they've know. Like say. the thing is, like I think there was a lot of like um, with Gamergate, there were a lot of people who like I would say fancied themselves progressives, but didn't exactly um, like didn't exactly espouse those values people who on the on paper were okay with gay people as long as gay people kept quiet and like 
I don't know. Like again, I I spent a lot of time on the on the quote unquote ground very quietly in Gamergate, taking notes and watching things and and seeing how things um, unfolded and poking and finding out what I could find out. And unfortunately, I mean, the reactionary element is un undeniable. I think a lot Absolutely. of the people who like a lot of the people who. Um, like were genuine progressives ended up like really really turning hard against it and uh, later on if they were fooled in but i don't really you know i haven't really seen that with a lot of people and there's a lot there's a certain element of of, of people who are involved who just want to pretend like it never happened but the fact of the matter is that it did and it hurt a lot of people and it's it has poisoned online discourse for like five years, but I don't know. It is complicated. I, and I do de generally agree that like, Hey, uh, I'd rather have, uh, I'd rather have a, a boogie two nine eight eight. That's m like mildly or, or really badly left wing or whatever. Um, than a boogie fourteen eighty eight. that's that much is, is, is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think like, I, I agree. Um, I agree with basically everything you said. The, the only, I, I feel like there's, um, there's as somebody who got sucked into this stuff. Now I wasn't super into Gamergate when it happened. I knew what it was. I'd heard of it, mm -hmm. and I supported it because you know the crazy SJWs. And I was in this sort of like for other examples of YouTubers that maybe weren't directly involved, but definitely supported it to a degree. Mm -hmm. Like you've got people like Ethan Klein, you know, H three H three. Yeah. Um. Like there's large YouTubers that now in hindsight do not agree with that kind of stuff and didn't know where it was going to go. Yeah. That did take part in that and did support it because at the time there's this really weird. Um. You can probably empathize with this. I know a lot of people can. Um. Nobody except very progressive people who are smart enough to know it was coming um understood that gamergate was going to be a gateway to the alt-right and arguably a much larger resurgence of sort of fascistic ideology in america and and abroad as well but mostly yeah. in america this is mostly an i think thing. that's true at first although it did sour very quickly and um and like I, I even say that as someone who at the very beginning, even though I was observing, was kind of partial to the idea of like um, out like really manipulative gaming games, media stuff, um, like getting their comeuppance, like people who actually were corrupt. But it just spun out of that so quickly. Um, and after that, it really did become uh, a just a mess of of targeting. They would pick a new woman every single week and just try to destroy that person's life. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's it is very complicated, but I but also I understand where the messaging was. I mean, they really did their their fucking best to try and give people as much plausible deniability. I think somebody in chat mentioned like moral licensing. Yeah, there was a lot of that. Like, I mean, there was a hashtag that went alongside um, Gamergate that not a lot of people remember that was called not your shield and not your shield was a bunch of uh, of minorities who like of various types whether they were trans or 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 gay or black who were not anonymous who posted their support for gamergate and also used the thing not your shield in order to be like oh like you know i think for myself it was like a candace owens kind of thing but it was mm -hmm. really you know there was a lot of people who got roped in that and those people almost all of those people who got involved in that ended up getting burned really fucking hard like oh, yeah. really fucking hard, really fucking quick. I don't know, yeah, in hindsight, fucked. everyone should have been able to see it coming. Maybe that's just yeah. because now I know how how these ideologies work and how completely irrational they are. Yeah. But to a lot of people back then, um, Gamergate I don't think was the cause of it, but was an uh, inevitable um, symptom of sort of a more like right populist uh, push that was happening in America at the time due to. At that point, what six, seven years of of a neoliberal president in Obama? Well, I and mean, so and also there was deliberate manipulation within Gamergate. Again, like uh, it should not be it should not be underestimated how Milo Yiannopoulos getting involved in Gamergate really super early on at the behest, I believe, if not of of uh, Bannon directly at the behest of Breitbart. It's Breitbart's like leading editorial staff, and uh, yeah, Andrew Breitbart, like like they went right in, and this was early up on. on it, yeah. yeah M Milo Yiannopoulos used his like comparative, um, you know, like his status as a journalist and as a like a, as a minor celebrity and people's general ignorance of the fact that Breitbart was a right wing magazine to get into places to get onto uh, podcasts with Sargon and all these people and boost them up specifically with 
right-wing money and right-wing support. So that was very, very much manufactured. I, I think also it's worth noting that like a lot of the people who got scooped up by Gamergate were younger people who just didn't, who just don't know about these types of things. And I think that's something that like, uh, hopefully will be a little better on the internet now. The internet's been around a little longer and there are more people on the internet who have experience with this kind of thing and who can help prevent like a bunch of younger, like l more inexperienced people from getting swooped up in this. Because it is true that if you've never seen anything like that before, you might not identify it. If you're just, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, like, geez, like at the time, like, fuck, I don't even remember what it was. Like, even for me, I had never seen anything like that, especially also because I had grown up in like a super right wing, um, you know, background where to me, this was like, oh, this is comparatively progressive to what I knew. But, but yeah, anyway, yeah, I think that, that like the fact that there is better social structures on the internet than there used to be slightly, actually there is, there is still then that period for sure. Then that's probably oh, yeah. rather hopeful. Yeah, so. no, I, I think so. Um, have you watched, um, fuck, what's the channel's name? Uh, he does the, uh, Alt right um, playbook vi uh, yeah, videos. Yeah, Innuendo Studios. Yep. Yeah, in Innuendo Studios used an analogy for mm -hmm. how like the alt right pipeline works that I think applies just as well to GamerGate itself, which mm -hmm. is a big portion of it. It's the it's like an onion. It's layers of an onion, you know. Yeah. So you've got the people on the far edge that kind of know what it is, and they're like, "Listen, I'm not like those people that are oblivious to what's going on outside of the onion, so outside of GamerGate, mm -hmm. but I'm not as crazy as the radical people that are being focused on by the media and stuff like that further in. This was the um, uh, th this was like the people who are doing the actual sexist stuff. People be like, I'm not like them. Those are just the, they're covering up the real people here that actually care about ethics and games journalism. And then you got the next layer, which is like the, yeah, Zoe Quinn's a piece of shit. Sometimes women use their bodies to to get ahead in, in the games industry. It's just yeah. another part of of how corrupt games journalism is. And you're like, but I'm not as I'm not cut like those people in the outer part of the onion that won't bite up down on this pill, but I'm not as crazy as the people who just outright hate women further in. And you sort of work your way in, right? Yep. And so there were a lot of people at different layers of the onion. I think most large public figures that weren't overtly political, besides like John Tron and stuff like that, people like H3H3 and probably Boogie were more so on the outer layers of the onion, not realizing how far it went. And yeah. um, I mean, t Total Biscuit was like that too, right? Because Total Biscuit yeah. voiced support, but then later rescinded it pretty hardcore. Um, mm -hmm. But but yeah, I mean, Boogie was a little further in than he likes to uh, than he yeah. likes to be reminded yeah. of. Um, because again, he he went to bat for Gamergate for a pretty long time, um, and you know he provided cover for some pretty bad people. But of course, like at the center of it, you've got like the Ethan Ralphs and the Milo Yiannopoulos. But Ethan Ralph was a really popular and like he like the, the problem that happens with these types of things is that there is some level of cultural amnesia that's used like that people don't know where these people come from they might like they might not know anything about their past like nobody knew that Milo Yiannopoulos wrote like a whole bunch of horrible shit because it's just like in the spur of the moment you see somebody agreeing with you and it's like ah yeah we got to go with the person who agrees with us look they're saying nice things and they're they're important and whatever. Yeah. yeah, well, but well dressed British gay guy. Wait, how, if he's supporting this movement, how yeah. can it actually like for progressive people looking at Milo Yiannopoulos? I know this is how I felt when I when I was getting into like the reactionary stuff. It's like, wait, he's a well dressed gay, um, you know, British dude. He presents, he seems to talk well, and 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 he's gay. How could the if he supports this? How could this be like this crazy like a right wing ultra conservative like bigoted thing? And at the time, being progressive ish you know being a liberal right yeah like i watched john oliver that was my politics yeah. basically um like how that that's sort of what enticed me was the idea that there were people who i was pretty sure couldn't be super far right involved in this and that sort of made me think oh it can't be that bad um but yeah no i i think um when it comes to boogie oh yeah his political opinions back then were probably much more uh shitty than mine even were back yeah, when i got yeah. into that kind of stuff definitely yeah um